What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Mixtapes Talk. I'm here. I really feel like you don't need an introduction. Four-time Miss Olympia, Jeremy Buendia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, man. I'm How are you doing today? I'm good, man. We had a good workout at your gym earlier. Good Met workout. Up with the squad and got a good arm pump in. No better way to start the, the weekend. You know, you have to get a workout first, of course, uh, <laughs> <laughs> coming from you. So I wanted to have you on here because I feel like a lot of people know you from Instagram. You've been in the industry. You're probably one of the pioneers in the industry. You were but in the first Mr. Uh, Men's Physique, correct? Yep. So I kind of wanted people to hear your story from when you first won your first Olympia to now, because I know a lot has changed from you, from career-wise to personal life-wise to everything. So I kind of want to start this off with, how did you get started in the fitness industry in general? I grew up around the weights. You know, my dad worked out every single day. I woke up to the slamming of weights instead of an alarm clock every morning before school. So my room was right here, the garage was right next door, and Every morning was the clinging of the weights, and that's how I got motivated and inspired. You know, I played football growing up and through you know, eight years old, all through I graduated high school. My older brother was a very good football player, so I aspired to be a lot like him, and the training is something that came along with the, with the sports, and I played year-round baseball, football. I wrestled a little bit, and um, I was really pushing for a, a, an athletic scholarship, and I had actually got one for football to a, a smaller school. Nice. But uh, unfortunately, my brother is actually 6'1", like 240 Your pounds. brother's 6'1"? 6'1", 240. <laughs> he took all my, the size. Oh. My, my parent, my mom's 5'2", my dad's 5'6". And your dad's buff. I met your dad before. He's, I, a, he's, he's big. You can he, tell he works out. He's 67. He yeah. still stays in shape. So my dad's my original inspiration to lifting and working out. It's something we've always shared since I was a little kid and something I've always, you know, seeing your dad buffed up and oh, going, yeah. you know all the kids always all my friends are always always in awe of how big his arms were it was yeah something i admired about my father and just the work out the work work ethic and the dedication day in and day in and out it's just something that rubbed off on me and um as i grad as i when i graduated high school i was actually preparing for my first bodybuilding show so all the senior activities all that fun stuff i just I put an end to that, and I just focused on my competition. Oh, so you started in high school? I started in high school. My okay. first show was, um, I was 17. It was two weeks after I graduated high school. So imagine, like, imagine going through graduation, like senior sunrise and all that type of stuff. Everybody's yeah. partying, having a good time, and I was there with my chicken and rice. You know, Did I, anyone coach you when you, when you were doing that? When yeah, you, I, had a, I had a local bodybuilding coach from one of the Nutra shops back yeah, in the day. One of the, some old school I, dude, buff dude, huh? <laughs> no, he was actually a young cat that actually helped me. He was, um, his name was Carlos. He was a big Puerto Rican guy. And... Um, he actually had me shave my head into a mohawk and bleach it the night before because he wanted the judges, me to, the eyes to be drawn to, to me on stage. <laughs> He's like, you got to get on stage. You got to flex and you got to yell. I'm like, I've never been to a bodybuilding show before. So I'm up there in front of everybody. He's like, <laughs> with a mohawk and shit. Mohawk. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you can dig up some of those pictures on my Facebook from back then. But Holy that's shit. how I got started. And, you know, I fell in love with the sport. You know, I was a really good student in school. I wanted to study physical therapy. Um, I ended up going to UC Davis after high school and uh, studying pre-med biology. Wow. And um, I ended up having my lung collapse. I've had lung issues since I was a kid. A lot of you guys have seen that scar on my back. Um, you I, know what, yeah, I've, I've always wondered what that was. Yeah, I was born with these blisters on my lungs and they'd pop, my lung would collapse, and then they'd rejuvenate. Oh, wow. So I'd have all, I had my lung collapse four times before I was 11 years old. Holy shit. And that felt like, you're, it feels like you're, you're having a heart attack. Like you're, when your lung collapses, the air gets trapped in your chest cavity yeah. and pushes all your organs up on towards your heart. There was one point I was like five minutes away from cardiac arrest when I was 11 years old. Wow. I had a, it was my fourth time my lung collapsed and we were scheduled for surgery the following day to get the, the bleps removed. <clears throat> and the, the lung wasn't supposed to collapse as fast as it did. So like, it'll be fine until the next day. Well, it started hurting really bad. Call, tell my mom, it's like, I don't feel good. We need to go to the hospital. And we're laying in the emergency room I looked at my mom like, mom, I'm going to die. And she looked at me and she lost her, lost it. She was running around the emergency room. Somebody helped my son. My doctor wasn't even in the hospital. So nobody wanted to take the case because I was scheduled for a surgery the oh, next day. Shit. So when I finally, my mom managed to get somebody's attention in there, they came in nonchalant with the x-ray machine and put it behind me and took the x-ray. They leave five minutes later, they come running back with a scalpel and they just walk in, put iodine on my chest and they stick me right in my chest and you hear, Shh. holy shit. So when the x-rays came back, all of my organs, there was so much pressure in my chest cavity, all of my organs had been pushed up on my heart. So the, the, it was literally like all oh, my stomach, I mean, everything was up here. Wow. So they said if it would like five more minutes, my heart would have stopped. And this was, you were 11 years old? I was 11 old? years old. Wow, so you've been dealing with this for a while and then you finally I, got it I, I guess, got the fixed. surgery fixed, yeah, and I haven't really had any issues since. My lung collapsed when I was 18 when I was at UC Davis, but it healed itself. 
but it kind of keeps me a little weary because yeah. they might not have gotten them all. So wow. it might happen again. I know when it happens. I know the feeling. And usually it's not like something you need to go to the hospital right away. I mean, last time it happened, I actually finished my workout. <laughs> of course he did. Of course <laughs> like, he did. I'm not going to be training for a few more months. <laughs> I got a couple more sets to do. I felt it. I was at the rec center at UC Davis. I felt my lung pop. Finished up a couple of sets. I walked outside, called the ambulance, come pick me up. And oh, me holy hospital. shit. Yeah. So you already know once it pops, you're like, yeah, okay, I got to get it. My cough gets hoarse. I can feel it. My, and the pressure start building up. That's crazy. Yeah. So, you, so you've, oh, you've been dealing with this your whole life then, huh? Yeah, I mean, I haven't had any issues since I was 18. Nice. And, and it's, been, it's been good. The only thing I can't do is be an astronaut or scuba diver. So, Well, damn. Sorry, pretty, NASA. Pretty, pretty tragic. But. <laughs> so you, <clears throat> how did you do in that bodybuilding show? Did you win it? No, I didn't. No, you didn't I took win. like third or fourth place. It was 17. That was my first show. I didn't, wasn't conditioned, didn't really diet that hard. Right. Well, when did, when did men physique start to come around? Like you were, at what age were, was, was that even 21 like? 21 years old. I didn't 21. do the first year of men's physique because they didn't have an Olympia. They had Olympia 2013. I believe it started in 2011 and I was still doing bodybuilding. And, um, when the division came about, Matt Christianer was kind of like I remember. the big name. He was winning all the shows. Steve Cook was, was big. Steve Cook. Uh -huh. Matt was getting all the covers, all the magazines. And, you know, I was like, wow, like, he's got a really nice physique. I was a big fan of his. And I ran into him at the national show USA's. And, you know, I was talking to him about his transition from bodybuilding because he was a national level middleweight. And he transitioned and his success blew up. And I was like, hey, man, like, you know, was it worth it? Do you enjoy the division? He's like, man, with the look you have and the physique you have, I think you do really well. A little, you know, I'd right. come back and beat him the following year. I know. He's like, fuck, I should have never said anything. <laughs> I, I attribute, Matt was always been a, been a good friend of mine, very motivating. And we did that, the Perfect Physique documentary together. I did see that. Um, I did that see was that. a really good experience. I got to meet a lot of the older guys that did like the, the, the modeling. They really started it off for, you know, us on the social media yeah. page. You know, the Greg Plitt was on that show, the, the documentary with yeah. us, which is an amazing experience. It was his last thing he did before he passed. Um, he passed away, I believe, like six months afterwards. Wow. Um, David Morin, um, David Kimberly, unfortunately, we lost him not too long ago as well. Um, Jason Poston was on there, Sadiq, Colin Wayne. A lot of these guys are super successful. So when I was there, I, was, I had just won, I think it was my first title, or maybe it was my second. But um, it was really humbling because I went in there understanding that I had an opportunity to learn from these guys. Right. So I, that's what I did. I took as much time to talk to the guys that have been successful. TJ Hoban was in there. He's like the first guy to make a million dollars from like, from like all the, the modeling and stuff in fitness. And oh, he's really? still killing it. He's like a, I think he's close to 50 years old now. He's like the WBFF world champion still. Still pushing. You know huh? TJ? Yeah. Yeah. He's a great, yeah. great guy. Great guy. Super, super inspiring. He's um, always been very motivating and very, um, helpful in a lot of ways. So I've been really gr grateful for the experience I had with those guys because I've been able to maintain the relationships and it was, it was really nice. Right. So you got an opportunity to learn from a lot of, a lot of the originals, I guess, if you want to call them guys that were pioneers in the industry, especially yeah. Greg. I Greg, mean, rest yeah. in peace, but you know, I that guy, amazing stories from that guy, that he had guy a, motivation he had a story was. about him being lost in the jungle and he was in the trees and Monkeys were throwing, throwing like <laughs> jizz at him and stuff. It was weird. Like he, he said some weird, some crazy stuff. That must stuff. have been a cool experience. But he, like, he, had a, he was like stuck in the jungle at one point and he said that he had to like find his way out and he was like being attacked by monkeys. Holy he had some shit. crazy stories. I mean, if he, if, I mean, this, some of the younger kids that listen to this, I call them kids. I'm in my 30s. Um, he was like the original guy I used to see all the time on muscle and fitness, all the magazines. Yeah. Magazines were big. Everywhere. You know, you would you would pull that out, you would see him and he'd be doing some kind of motivational, you know, his workouts were always super intense. I think he so. inspired all of us. Everybody, right? Point, yeah. I think if you're ever in the fitness industry and you were in there like in the two thousands, even probably the late nineties, like he was the guy. Yeah. He was that guy. So you were able to learn from them. So was there like any animosity in that house? I, I did watch that documentary because, you know, you're yeah, the up and yeah. coming guy. Yeah, it was weird being the youngest guy in the house and I had the master bedroom. It was the Olympia champion that year, got the master bedroom in the house. So being the youngest guy in the house and <laughs> <laughs> shit, yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah. probably like this was, fucking kid. They were all very, they were all very nice and respectful. There was some tension in the, in the house, um, not between me necessarily, but some of the other guys. But what do you do? Well, that, that happens. You put eight or nine guys in the house for two weeks. A know? lot of elite guys with elite, you know, a lot of testosterone. Yeah, a lot of testosterone yeah, going through. Yeah, yeah. So what year was that? That was, I believe, two thousand. And that was your first one. Fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so two thousand four, my first Olympia win. Did you envision yourself when you first got into this being this four-time champion or was it something when you won the first one that you knew, okay, I need to push harder for the second, the third, the fourth or? Yeah, I had an intention when I switched over to men's physique. I knew I had an opportunity to, to be the best in the sport and um, I tried to say that as humbly as possible, but I did know in the back of my mind that I had a goal of being the champ and um, winning my 
you know, going to nationals, my first national, winning the overall, going to my pro debut, winning my pro debut, and then going to Olympia, winning, taking second at my first Olympia. It, it, it boosts my motivation, my, my confidence a lot, especially when I stepped off stage that first time at 22 years old. I was the second best in the world. Wow. I wasn't going to settle for anything better, anything less than first That's place. You, you lost to Mark, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember that one too. Yeah. So it was, uh, that was a, uh, yeah, lost to Mark. And after that, I was never going to lose to Mark again or anybody else. So, nice. you know, uh, the next few years, you know, we went on a run and, and um, it was a really good experience, man. It was, it was a different, a very, uh, Oh, a roller coaster of an experience. Right, right. And I, I guess a what I'm, I, I guess what I want people to understand is you got into this at at, at what age did you win your first Olympia? It's twenty three. You're twenty three years old. Mm -hmm. You're literally the poster boy for like anything fitness. I mean, you were everywhere. You have sponsors coming at you. You have everything pretty much at your fingertips. Like, how did you did you use that as motivation to try to be the king of the mountain, or was it more of like a humbling because you're dealing with these these guys that are like have been kings of it for a while i always felt like i was chasing somebody even when i was the champ you know going into my second olympia sadiq had sadiq, sadiq was my biggest rival that was a good rivalry though it was a great rivalry. that was a good and, rivalry and me yeah. and sadiq we i mean we've established an amazing friendship over the years and you know without each other we wouldn't have been as good i believe and, that you know it's nice now like 10 years later we still have a good relationship you know he just had a, a child and yeah you, you guys know, I just had my daughter so you know we send him gift gifts back and forth and it's, it's nice to, that we've built that friendship based off of the the rivalry we've right. had and you know we're each other's biggest fans at this point i'm looking forward to seeing him get on stage and i wish nothing but success for the guy because he's you know without him i probably wouldn't have been as great but um like i said going into that olympia evagen my sponsor at the time was very small still you know gat was one of the biggest sponsors who sneak was yep. with so imagine being a champ going in and you i walk into olympia and it just adds a Sadiq running everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's all the Jumbotrons, all Sadiq, all Steve Cook. Yeah. And I'm just like, I just felt like a, the underdog the whole time. And even leading up into the, the, the third Olympia with Sadiq, was it the second or third? The second one, that one. That was our second rivalry. Because the third Olympia was against Ryan Terry. Um, still, I had a, even the fans, they were, they were favoriting Sadiq in a lot of ways. And, you know, being the champ, two time champ coming in as an underdog still. You know, uh, it, it, it adds to the, that, that spice a little bit. It made me a little bit hungrier because, you know, I still felt like I had a lot to prove. And, that, and that's a good point because I feel like a lot of people, once they hit that, win that first Olympia or second Olympia, you kind of feel like I've accomplished it. But for you, you were like, I'm still not where I want to be. And you use that as motivation, especially going into, I remember Ryan Terry was like the guy from the UK that everyone's like, this guy's going to win it. I think he was winning all the shows over there. He was winning every show he went on. So I know that was a... It was the third one, I believe, right? That was a that was a great yeah, rivalry. That was too. a really close show. That was the closest Olympia I had. I won by one point that yeah. year against Ryan. Um, I think Jerry Potvin took third that year, and um, yeah, it was it was a close show. You know, I still think um, I still think my favorite Olympia was it was the second win against Sadiq. That was that was my favorite Olympia by far. Just the the amount of hype, the the pressure that was going into it was 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 at its all time high. And just to come out victorious was just such an accomplishment personally that, you know, that's something that I always remember. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what, out of all the four, which ones that is, but it's the it was, one with it was, Sadiq? It was the second one against Sadiq, my second title. That was, that was awesome. The four, my last title was amazing, too, winning four. Um, Jay Cutler told me after I won my second one, because I've been very close to Jay, Hani coached Jay as well. So I've always been kind of tied in with those guys since the beginning of my career. And uh, Jay told me after I won my second one, he looked at me and goes, you can't stop until you beat me. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, stop until you beat me. So when I won my fourth one, he looked at me and goes, you got one more to go. <laughs> and I still haven't gotten that one, so it's always been in the back of my mind. I got the tattoo on my neck with the four tallies. That was never, that's not finished yet. Yeah, you got The whole point I got the tallies was because I wanted that cross tally. I wanted five. That's the only reason I started the tally system. So, you know, we're, we still have some unfinished business, and um, I've been, you know, it's been about, personally, about me getting myself right in order to bring my best. And that's something I talked about in a recent podcast is, what happened in 2018, which mm -hmm. is why we're, why wasn't I as good as 2017? Why'd I lose? A lot of factors, a lot of things, you know, the torn peck beginning of the year, my lifestyle, <clears throat> my mentality, all the things are off. There are so many distractions and bodybuilding, especially at that level, you have to be able to give 100% effort undistracted and because you got everybody giving it their 100 percent effort. Right. Every single day, you have the best guys in the world, and if you think any of those guys are cutting corners, you're not giving them enough credit. You know, you can't. I was telling my clients is, the shows aren't won on that day. 
you got to beat these guys every day 12 weeks out. Right. This competition starts 12 weeks out. You can't think, you can't take a day off because then that guy's getting ahead of you. So that's the mentality you got to wake up and you got to, you're, you're competing daily. It's a champion mentality. Your champion mentality, man. You get up and you're, you're doing cardio. I envision the guy next to me doing cardio. Right. You know, I'm going to outdo you. I'm going to outlift you. I'm going to outtrain you. That extra rep, I'm envisioning that guy next to me pushing that extra rep. Especially at that level you're at, everybody's gunning for you as well. So like that, uh, that fifth one came up a little bit short. Came up a little short, yeah. What do you think was the main factor for that i mean do you, do you feel like you were your best or no absolutely not the distractions it was also god putting me in my place too i wasn't supposed to be the champion that year the way everything was going in my life if i would have won again that year it would have probably been the worst thing for me just just the 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 circle i had the people in my ear the way i was living my life my priorities um my perception everything was off and if I felt I would have won, I would have kept doing the same thing I would have been doing. It would have validated all the stuff that you, all the bullshit you exactly. were doing. Exactly. It would have, it would have validated it all. And I probably would have continued doing a lot of things I was doing. And that would have led me nowhere, nowhere quick. It would have led me to some of the places that some of the other people I was with went. So, you know, I'm just glad that I had an inter God had an, an intervention in my life. And, you know, at the time I thought, it, you know, it was a disaster. You know, I thought it was a cur some sort of curse or whatever. But as I've gotten older and matured, I'm realizing that a lot of these things that happen in my life happen for a reason. And they're, they're blessings in disguise and they're opportunities right. for me to grow and learn from them. And, and looking back, you know, I was very bitter for a lot of things that happened to me in the past. And it, being bitter and not understanding, you know, the bigger picture of things, right. it put me into a really, really dark hole where I was just beating myself up all the time. Where I was listening to the critics, you know, letting other people dictate my feelings, my emotions. And when you start allowing people to, to tell you who you are, start to manipulate the way you think about yourself, you know, that's when, that's when you start you're spiraling down. Right. And you let, the, you let things add up. And it gets harder and harder to get yourself out of those things. Oh, I can imagine, especially at your level. I mean, you're at the highest level. I would level. say at any level, man. It True. I think anybody, anybody can, has influence around them. And if you allow other people to influence you, it takes away from your genuine self and what, you, what you're trying to accomplish. And, you know, nobody can tell you what you are. You are what you decide you are. You know, and that's, that's one of the biggest things that I've realized is I let a lot of people get in my head. And I let a lot of people dictate the way I felt about myself. And, and honestly, I, you know, a lot of that is just me being separated from God a lot of the times. I became a target. The devil had his hands on me. He using the world against me in a lot of ways. And, you know, I was vulnerable. And when you remove yourself from, when you don't walk with God, you don't have, when you don't have your life aligned with God, you became a huge target, yes. an easy target. And I was a very easy target, for, you know, after Olympia in, in every single way. And I felt like the devil was just feasting on me and sending me into a deeper and darker spiral. And um, I tried, it was, you just felt this, this hole. Right. You know, I had a lot of success, you know, materialistic things. After Olympia, I was making really good money. Even after I lost, you know, I wanted to make myself feel better. So I bought myself a Lamborghini. I remember you that. Lambo. That was a nice Lambo. But <laughs> uh, expensive Lambo. Yes. A dumb decision. You know, it was just, you know, learning experience to get. It's just, I had a lot of materialistic things in my life and I was putting way too much value on those things. I love that. And during that time, I might have been rich, but I was so poor in things that mattered. Friendships, family, and my relationship with God. I didn't have any of those things. My friends were fake. My family wasn't supporting me because they didn't like what they were seeing, which I 100% understand. And then my walk with God was completely off. And when you don't have those three things, those are the three things in life that you need. Those are the three things that are free in life, and those are the three things that we absolutely need. Oh, I love that. And when you don't have those things, your perception in the world around you can manipulate the way you live and the way you envision everything. And you know, being able to take this step back and have those losses, I don't even call them losses anymore. I didn't lose anything. I gained a lot in the process. I got rid of things. So I got rid of a lot of the crap that was weighing me down to open up my mind to be able to see what needed to be done and the way I needed to live. And now that I'm back to a point where I'm walking stronger with my relationship with God, you know, I have my family back. I have solid friends in my corner that genuinely love and care about me. Now we're going to start seeing some breakthrough. And I have the past, you know, past year things were at an all-time low right after I had my daughter you know it's supposed to be the best time of my life right I just got married had a little girl but 
when I looked at her and I realized the way I was living my life wasn't going to be a good example for her. I wasn't going to be able to provide for her. I wasn't going to be able to do any of those things. It hurt. Every time I looked at my little girl, I felt like a failure because I wasn't being my best for her. So it was just a certain, like I, I had, it was like a two month period after I had my daughter, I wasn't doing very well. I was just, you know, I was struggling. Like I just knew I wasn't my best and seeing her was a reminder that I was, I wasn't being the man I should be. What do you think when you say you weren't doing your best? Like, what do you, do you mean at that time you weren't really walking with God at that time you weren't practicing what you mm-hmm. preach? I was just... walking with God. I was, you know, I was, I wasn't working out. My body was, I was injured. I was, I was depressed. It was a lot of things. Um, I was drinking a lot. COVID really, when the shutdown happened, I'd kind of just let everything go. You know, I didn't think I was going to compete again. I didn't know what was happening with the world. I right. think a lot of All us, of I us, think a yeah. lot of us, I think the first couple of months I, <laughs> we started our mornings off with Bloody Marys. We had some Coronas or some White Claws. Right. And, I mean, we drank that first two months. and I think it was kind of fun. It was kind of funny, right? Like, oh, yeah, this is, the world shut down for a little bit. Let's do some shit we wouldn't do. And then when it would turn into the third month, you're like, okay, when the fuck are we getting out of this? Yeah. And then yeah. by that, that time, you were too deep in. Yeah, and, you know, that put me in a deeper spiral, too, doing those things. You know, I feel, you know, I was, like I said, I, was, I, rem- I had been so far removed from God at one point where I was, I, I grew up in a Christian household, my parents, and I, God on the phone, I was like, I don't even think there's a God anymore. You know, that was like probably a year and a half ago. Who'd you tell that to? My parents. Wow. You know, I was like, and they're, you know, that's something that's heartbreaking to, for them to hear. Very much. And I was searching for some sort of spiritual awakening, some sort of experience and doing things I shouldn't have been doing. And that's just the, you know, I have a lot of friends that, not a lot of friends, I have some friends that like to experience the psychedelics and stuff like that. And, you know, I feel that a lot of the people are doing this because they want, they're looking for that spiritual awakening. They want to feel that connection with God, but doing it through hallucinogens and psychedelics is not the way to do it. It's, that is the way of letting the devil in to manipulate. That's his way. He's tricking you into thinking he's God, and that's exactly what he wants you to do. So, you know, I've distanced myself from everything. You know, I don't drink anymore. I don't mess around with any of the stuff. I shouldn't mess. I don't mess around with drugs anymore. I don't do any of that stuff. Just to lay it out simple. Nice. You know, there was um, a point in my life where I was doing a lot of bad things. You know, I think uh, there's a lot of people that are in a similar situation that I need to hear it right now because you're not going to get anywhere. That, especially if you're doing it to find a spiritual awakening, you're not going to find it that way. It's going to lead you to a much deeper and darker place. You know, and it took a lot for me to to humble myself and realize that life isn't, we aren't meant to live life alone and without God because, you know, where's the purpose and fulfillment? You know, what are we, what are we really here for? If we're really under, trying to think about life and we're, we don't believe in life after death, what is the purpose? What's the point? Right. So, you know, I'm really starting to understand and through reading my Bible and through going back to church and understanding the, the purpose and fulfillment, like I was questioning bodybuilding. Does God want me to bodybuild? Does he want me to do fitness? You know, it's like, I've had that answer. Yes, he does want me to train. He does want me to bodybuild. Is it because he wants me to be the best bodybuilder in the world? No, because he understands that I can have, I have an impact, I have a reach, I have a following. And based off the story that I had and the, 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 the basically the downfall of Jeremy Buendia, I want to see how, I want everybody to see how God's been able to pick me back up and redeem me because that's what he does. He's our, he's our redeemer. And if people can understand that, that they have an opportunity to start over, start fresh and be somebody that they want to be, it's not as hard as you guys think it is. It's a matter of just, you know, it's it's having a conversation with God and, and, and being reborn again and having that faith that God can do all things. And that's what I've really been focusing on this, you know, the past eight, nine months is, is trying to stay focused on God, even though I've had the success coming back. Right. And that's something that I really, I, I didn't do. You know, I, I needed God when I needed God, but when I didn't need God, I didn't need God. Right. When it was convenient for you, exactly. when something was going wrong, exactly. I think a lot of people pray to God yeah, for I help. I, I always went to church before Olympia. Like two months out, I'd always go to church every week. But the moment I went on my Olympia, nah, I'm gonna go to church. I won't go again until I'm two weeks uh, two weeks <laughs> yeah. out again, huh? You know, and that's mm-hmm. that's not the way that you know. I wouldn't treat my friends that way. Very true. You know? I wouldn't treat my father that way. I'm sure as heck not gonna treat my heavenly father that way. So it's just you understanding, you know, as success comes, understanding where that comes from, and being grateful and showing that gratitude, and and being humble enough to understand that that's not all you. You know, and that's that's the biggest thing, and you know, with bodybuilding and my following and. If I'm able to show people this, that's my that's my journey. That's my purpose right now. Right, is is showing people that they can change. They can they can be better. There's more purpose in life. 
Right. And, and like you said, it, it's, it's not a downfall. It's more of a blessing because you were able to open your eyes to other things, friends that were around you, influences that shouldn't have been there and uh, the greater purpose. So I love that you're using that if you want to call it a negative, but sometimes I feel like in order to move forward, we have to move a couple steps back. Yeah. And for you, you took that, understood it. And now you're like literally on the path. Can we say back to competing? Yeah. Man. Back yeah, to competing. That's, okay. I mean, yeah, I'm, that's the goal. You guys, the biggest thing is just trying to keep my body healthy at this point. You know, I've dealt with a lot of injuries, um, my whole career starting from when, the very beginning with right. football. I hurt my back. I've four herniated discs in my lower back, two herniated discs in my neck. Jesus. I have spinal stenosis in my neck, which is the narrowing of the spinal canal on the spinal cord in my neck and my lower back. I have the, basically the spine of a 65-year-old man. Holy shit. I wake up in pain every day. I, it takes me about an hour to get going in the morning. I got to get up, go to the gym, do my cardio, do my stretching and rolling. If I don't do that, my body's killing me. Wow. And it's something I deal with all the time. You know, I, have, I, have, I got a torn pec. I got rotator cuff issues. So, you know, my training has changed and evolved and I've been a lot smarter taking care of my body. I do therapy with, my, with some amazing therapists out in Roseville. Um, he actually works down here too. His name's Troy Goings. He's been taking care of my body twice a week. And nice. And really, really focused, prioritizing my health and making sure I'm training smarter and doing the proper recovery because ultimately I'm not getting any younger. My body's yep. not getting any younger. My joints aren't getting any better. So I got to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to have a more sustained career in this. And, um, you know, I want to get back on stage next year if I stay healthy. Um, 2023? 2023. And I definitely want to. You already qualify though, right? So you yeah, literally, you go straight, you straight to Olympia. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people see, obviously, you've been doing legs. Your legs yeah. have been blowing up. Yeah. Is there a chance for a crossover? Are you going gonna... to? Potentially, you know, I just got to see how my body grows. There's, I mean, my back is still a weak point. I like to catch up with these guys. They're, they're big. Industry's changed. It's changed. It's you changed know, a lot I, since I feel when... that my size right now is it can compete with, with the best of a men's physique. I think social the pictures on instagram don't do much justice for my true size every time i you know people see me they say you're a lot bigger in person um i, don't, I haven't seen any competitors in person in years so i don't really know um i saw Eurus in germany um he took fourth at olympia he a big dude he's a big, he's a big dude. dude he's yeah. a big dude i don't know what it, he's a taller than me. he's like 5 11 but he's like 240 in his off season i'm only like 200 205 right now wow so it's just um I don't know, man. It's just whatever, whatever God's plan is for me at this point, I'm going to keep training hard and building my body up all over. And if I land in classic physique, I can. It's just a matter of, you know, what, how much I'm willing to push my body, what I'm willing to do to with right. it and, you know, keep myself healthy. You know, I have a daughter now too. So longevity is key. I want to be around for her. So with all the recent deaths and bodybuilding, it's been a scary thing. And my health has been a priority. I work with uh, Transcend Hormone Therapy. They've been doing a great job of maintaining my blood work every I've three seen weeks. That or every three months, I do my blood work, making sure, I've actually, my blood work's gotten better progressively as I've gained size the past year, which is really, really awesome to see. Um, were you doing any of this in the prior Olympias? Like, were you getting blood work done? Were not you as regularly, like, Hani would have me get blood work before prep and after prep, but like, he made sure I was healthy. And he never, I never pushed as much gear as a lot of these other guys are pushing. Right. Like, Hani was always, always health first. He always took care of me like his own son. That's good. So it was, you know, he wouldn't even, you know, tell me what to take before I got my blood work done. Nice. So, because young Jeremy would have been like, I'm already ahead of the curve. Just give me everything and then we'll figure it out later. But now you have a wife, beautiful mm -hmm. wife, beautiful daughter. What do you think is going to change the most on this prep? Like mentally, now that you know you, you're walking with God, you have a clear vision. What do you think is going to be the difference between... 2018 the loss and oh i'm focused man there's no distractions you know i have a god on my side too so the, the the last one that you lost though were you were you top five in that one yeah i took fourth in you the took last fourth. one i still think that was a gift i didn't i don't think i deserved top five in that show wow i was off man i was really off i i we pulled my water too soon um i was taking adderall a lot in 2018 and um yeah, don't do that stuff. <laughs> uh, but messed with my electrolytes. Like I, I took an Adderall that, that morning of the show because I just was taking Adderall regularly. So I was like, yeah, hey, I should take one. And um, that messes with your electrolytes. I couldn't yeah. hide, get hydrated. I couldn't get full. Um, yeah, so I think that had a big thing to do with it too. And like I said, another distraction, just yeah. doing things I shouldn't have been doing. And um, you lesson was learned. Oh, yeah. So now, now this prep, I think we kind of talked a little bit off camera. You're going to prep yourself this time, right? We'll see. For I got, the most I got, part, I got, you're still I, real early. You got a lot of time. I got a lot of time. I mean, we might call on a coach to help keep an extra eye on me. I'm just not sure who that would be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be really hard to find another coach after Hani because of how close the relationship was and how, how well we worked together. They, 
another coach now with big shoes to fill. Right. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I do my own competition press for other clients. I'm pretty locked in on, on my knowledge, but like I said, it's always good to have an extra set of eyes on you. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's, it, I don't know yet. We'll see when the, we'll cross that bridge when we get a little yeah, closer. Yeah, because I would say you still got a lot of time. I know you want to put on a lot more size mm -hmm. before you even cross that bridge. Is there any athletes right now in men's physique that, that you have your eye on? And not in like in a competitive way, just like, man, these guys are really going to be probably good competition for me when yeah. I do the... Brandon, obviously. Brandon, I, I yeah. want if I, don't, I want Brandon to win this year. I want him to get number four because then we'll battle for number five next year. You guys year. will be tied. Yeah. And I, want, I think that'd be a great story. Yeah. I'm, I'm, up for the, I'm up for it. I want, I want that... I want that challenge. You know, I want that. I would like that pressure again. Well, that, that because that's for number five, man. Number five takes it all. That'd be five for both of you guys. That's yeah. a good storyline. You know, you know, uh, Olympia wants that too because they're like, that's the story. It reminds me of uh, the the Kai Green, the Kai Green one when he would go against um, Phil Phil Heath, yeah. and everybody wanted to see that battle. So yeah. that'd be a good one. Yeah. So, is there anyone else that you just think off the top of your head that you're like is looking good? Maybe a competition. There's a, there's for a lot of great guys out there, man. I there's, feel like every day there's somebody. There's somebody new popping up everywhere. There's some guy I want to show in Australia I've never heard of before. He looked amazing. I don't even know his name. Crazy physique on him. Tiny little waist, big old shoulders. And you got some guys out of like Russia that look good. I got China, my, there's I, a lot of. My client in the Philippines, Ven, he looks awesome. He's like a bigger carbon copy of me. I don't He's He's great. He uh, took second in Thailand Pro. We're gonna try to get him. I qualified. saw that. Yeah, he looks amazing. There's just there's just so much talent out there. You know, it's it's like it's apples and oranges, and it's it's who shows up that day on point. That's a, that's exactly what it is. People don't understand that there's so much stuff that goes into it, but the day of is when you really have to be your best. It's all timing. But, yeah, yeah. That, oh, shoot, that'd be a good that'd be a good Olympia to go to. So let's just say perfect world. You get there, you win it. Do you have a five year plan as far as what you want to do with competing? Just competing in general. I haven't thought that far ahead, no. man. No, I, I got my eyes set on the next competition, and we'll take it from there. Um, like I said, I want to keep myself healthy, so I don't see myself competing past 34, 35. You know, then I'll, I want to, I want to get back on top. I want to, I want to finish my career with a, with a better conversation about Jeremy Buendia than right. we've had in the past recent years. Um, I want people to see the new and improved Jeremy Buendia. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the biggest thing for me is. The way I walked away from the Olympia stage and everything that happened the months afterwards it was it was heartbreaking for me because I worked really hard in my 20s to accomplish all that. I felt like it was kind of just diminished by all the crap that I brought upon myself and all the things that happened in 2018 and 19 after Olympia. And um, it's been hard. It was hard, very hard for myself for to live with myself for a while just because of seeing the opportunities I missed out on, you know, just because of my attitude and my ego and... Um, it was very humbling to to come back and you know take smaller sponsors and work my way back up and you know I flew to Germany I don't I haven't flown economy class <laughs> I haven't flown economy I haven't flown economy class since like before I was Olympia champion and you know I was just I talked to my wife about it like they booked the trip and it was economy flight I was like you know what I'm not gonna say anything I'm gonna I'm gonna work my way back up I'll take this flight. I'm glad I went out there and, you know, my fans, I haven't been to an expo in three years and I had a line out the door. FIBO, right? FIBO, yeah, yeah. Germany. It was a, the smallest FIBO I've ever been to. It was really? crazy. The turnout was terrible. But um, my, I had a nice, nice line. My fans were there and I that made that. me feel good, dude. Like I, I went out there with, with not very big expectations. I was like, I don't know if people were really going to want to come out and see me. But no, it, it boosted my spirit. And I was out there training with Chris Cormier. We got some, got some good tra training content. We posted some pictures, got the industry talking a little bit again. Yeah. And it kind of sparked that fire, you know, just to kind of be talked about again in, in the light of bodybuilding because the conversation six, eight months ago was, Jeremy Bundy is too small. He's never going to come back. He looks like crap. He's this, this, and this. And and I, I you always utilize that. Like, you guys have seen my progress from when I got back in the gym a year ago. I haven't been shy about it. I posted oh, yeah. me at my worst. I posted it one month back into training. You know, and it's because I knew what I'm capable of and I wanted to use that as motivation. Like I didn't, I didn't want all these people to, I don't want them to be right about me. Right. You know, I want them to realize that I'm capable of a lot more. So I put myself out there and you know, it's nice now to look back and kind of silence the critics a little bit. Oh yeah. There's, I mean, I would say within the last couple of months, you've been posting these progress pricks and you're like, okay, he looks good. And you're like, holy shit, he's, he's pretty big. And then the next post you're like, God, this guy looks like he's right back. I think you posted one. Um, from when you were like two weeks out and then a recent one, I'm like, dude, just pull some water and you're pretty much fucking there. Yeah. So I think you do have the industry talking a lot, but it's, it's great, 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 great to see 
where you started, the highs of the highs, all the distractions that you had, you took a dip down, and now you're kind of back on pace with that, looking to compete again in, in 2023, which I'm excited for. Um, right now, you got your sponsors back, right? Yeah. Who are you sponsored by right now? Currently, I'm with Java Labs. They're out of Poland. Um, I'm with VQ, Vanquish. I've been, I was actually their first sponsored athlete in 2017. They brought me back, back on board. And then I'm with uh, Transcend, HRT, a great hormone clinic out of Michigan. They work with everybody nationally. Um, they send your blood work out deliver your, your med medications to your doorstep. They're amazing. They had an amazing specialist team to go over your blood work with you line by line. Nice. It's just been huge, especially for a lot of guys that are competing, you know, with everything going on, you guys gotta take care of yourselves and get your blood work done, make sure you stay healthy. And then also, my, lastly, but not least, my Flex Pro Meals, my meal sponsor, they've been, they've been amazing. You've been with them for a while, haven't you? Yeah, I've been with them for like two years. They stuck with me through everything. So I'm very nice. appreciative of what they've done for me. And, you know, we've been able to do great business together. And, you know, they're awesome because they do like next day delivery. I have my meals waiting for me at my hotel. Shit. So like I get to go home, after, go back to the room after this, and I don't got to worry about food. It's all, all ready for me. Nice, nice. Yeah. So a lot of these people that are probably listening to this episode, especially tuning in now, they're probably trying to get where you're at. What would you the best advice you'd give like a young bodybuilder, young guy trying to break into the industry? It's consistency, man. It's consistency in your, your work ethic and your dedication. It's, it's getting up every day and, and grinding, especially when you're young. You know, you're, there, there is an opportunity. You don't need to have time to rest when you're young. You know, if you're resting and sitting around doing nothing in your 20s, you're not going to be set up for your 30s or 40s. You know, it's being in your 20s is the time to really hustle and grind to set yourself up because you don't want to be 30 and trying to figure it out then. Right. And then the next thing you know, you're going to be 40 and asking yourself that same question. Right. And then you're, then it's too late. You got a kid, you got a wife yeah. now, and then things kind of jumbled it's, it's, up. It's hustling. Don't, don't sleep, you know, until you're, until you've made it. No, not, you know, literally, but you know, work, work, work hard. You know, you shouldn't be, I didn't watch TV when I was in my early twenties. Let's put it that way. I don't, you would never find me on the couch in the middle of the day watching TV because I had things to do that work to be done. So, Kind of talking, we don't have to go too deep into it, but talking about the recent deaths and, and stuff like that. Some of, I get a lot of questions about gear use in general, mm -hmm. right? Would you recommend anyone that's going to use any kind of gear to get their blood work done? Absolutely. I don't, you guys need to be educated on everything first. Don't put nothing in your body. You don't know what it is. And too many guys are doing that. A coach will tell them, hey, take this, take this, take this. They're like, yeah, okay. You guys need to, your body is your temple. You need to take care of it. You should understand everything going in, you know, all it takes is doing some simple research and understanding. And there's too many guys that are taking too much stuff, and they're not even competing. They're not, they're that's just, a, they're that's just, always crazy to me. Guys at the gym that are young, and I think they're doing a show, and they're telling me they're taking X, Y, Z, and I'm like, holy shit, you're not even competing? No, I'm just getting ready for Vegas. A lot of these guys don't even understand how bad this stuff is for them, and that's the problem is, is they don't understand you can't take an oral steroid for more than a few, six, eight weeks without it doing some serious damage to your kidneys and liver. And a lot of these guys running shoe after show, they just don't care. And some of these guys like to party too. Yeah, they no. Like to, they like to drink on top of it. And that's just, you're asking for Your liver is going to be fried by the time you're 30. Have you ever reached out to any of these guys to just kind of? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I had an older client. I, I had him get his blood work done recently. And it was like, the guy, my specialist called me. He's like, dude, this is the worst blood work I've ever seen. Holy shit. The guy didn't want to hear it. He's like, I want to compete next in three weeks. I'm like, dude, you can't. You're not going to be able to. And he did the show. I didn't coach him before. I told him, like, I'm not supporting this. Yeah, yeah. He ended up doing the show. He won his class. And then he's out drinking and partying, like, the following week. I'm like, wow. dude, like, you didn't even give your liver or kidney a break at all. You know, you're not young either. So yeah. It's, it's hard for me to see because, I, you know, I can only say so much to somebody. And right. before I get annoying to them, you know, yeah, I, yeah. he's a grown man. He can make his own decisions. And I, I've laid it out for him. And I just pray that nothing happens to him. And he, wise up sooner or later right but i'm pretty sure you get so many dms from people like hey i want to compete you know what's the first step i should take and mm -hmm. you you kind of get all those right now you are currently coaching clients yeah I mean, oh. I, i'm still i'm coaching athletes i have a group of guys that met at your gym earlier yeah. um yeah I'm, I'm just working on with my serious clients I, I want guys that are gonna that are want to train want to work hard that want to follow instructions i'm not here to babysit i'm not here <laughs> to you know you're if i give you a diet plan and I'm expecting you to follow it. Don't hit me right. up. Like, oh, I didn't eat meals three and four all week. Like, then don't check in. Right. You know, it's, there's, I can only help you if you're willing to help yourself. And, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that just, that, that want to get coached by me just to, just to get coached by me. That's what I was going to ask you. Are you taking on athletes right now? Like if people are listening to this and like, Hey, I'm looking for a coach. If you guys are serious and you guys really want to, if you guys really want to work hard and want to take it seriously and follow my instructions and yeah, hit me up, send me a message and I'll, I can work with you. But if you're just doing it because you want to 
work out and say you train with me, just, you know, don't waste my time, don't waste your time. Let's get after it and let's make you better. I mean, I have complete transformations of people in eight weeks, you know. Oh, yeah, we saw, we I, saw, saw your, I saw your athletes there. They look. They look awesome. They, they look awesome. They did not look that way three months no, ago. No, yeah, they look really you know? good. And it took a couple of conversations with those guys, you know. Two of them I knew prior to them coaching with you, and I went up to them and said, well, I see the huge difference. And yeah. they're like, this guy right here is a genius. So, yeah, yeah I, I've definitely seen it with my own eyes. But obviously, you're down here in Southern California. You live in Northern California. For, you, for, now. For, yeah, now. for now. For now, you're looking to make yeah. the, the switch we, back we were, to SoCal? We were down here in SoCal. I was down here for like six years when we got pregnant. Both my wife and I are from Sacramento area, Roseville. We grew up there. Both our parents are still up there. So we got pregnant. We wanted to be up near our family so right. our daughter could be around her grandparents mm -hmm. and her family. Best decision we made. It was, oh, it was, 100%. It was great. It was, it was the time I needed to get away. Brought me back to, you know, my family brought me back to God. And, you know, it was exactly what I needed in that time in my life. But now I've rebuilt myself. I'm, I'm walking firm and strong again. And it's time to come back down here and, and do what I do best and, you know, build something great and work with my athletes. And, you know, just coming back and doing what I did at your gym today brought back a lot of memories and, you know, I just reminds me what I can bring to the table. Yeah, no, you were in the zone. You were in the zone when I was up there. I love working my, yeah. with my guys. They all look up to me. They all they all listen to what I have to say. They and um, they all get better. And it's it's fun for me to watch and see them grow as athletes and their confidence grow. It means a lot. You know, I had a couple of guys that were in there today that were super overweight before, and you know, he's comfortable with his shirt off now. Wow, and that's you know, that's a big win right there. It's a, it's a big win. Just the way they walk and they talk, and it's, it's nice to see that confidence grow and. You know, if I'm able to instill, you know, what I've learned in the past two years in some of these guys, which I have, you know, it, 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 it's great. You know, I had a Zach Ainsley, one of my buddies in, oh, yeah. in, in the UK, not a religious guy at all. And, you know, he's been listening to a couple of my podcasts and following me. And I talked to him here and there and, and tell him about, you know, how my life's changed a lot. And, you know, he sent me a picture the other day. He's like, my first time in church. He sent a picture of him in church. Wow. I'm just like, man, that's it, man. That's it. That, just, that right there is validation that what I'm doing right now is what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, of course. So. I mean, a lot of people look up to you. And, and I was talking to your wife um, about your trip at Disneyland, and she was like, no, people recognize him. They look at him. They just don't know if they could go up to him. <laughs> and I, I feel like you've been in the industry for so long, maybe you don't see it, but you're a huge inspiration to a lot of people. A lot of people look up to you. Obviously, you're always going to have people that pray for your downfall, but at the same time, people seeing you come out of this walking with God and the changes you've made. I mean, I've seen it on IG. I've talked to you a couple of times through DM. You can really tell the difference in your focus, and that's inspiring to a lot of people. And the only thing that's changed, really, is you walk closer with God now. Yeah. You're yeah, more man. religious. It changes a lot, though. It's not that's not the only change. God has brought a lot of changes in my life. Like, even my own wants and desires, like, they're different now. Like, the, the urges aren't there as much to do things. Like, going out and hanging out with friends, barting and drinking. Yeah. Like that was Friday and Saturday. I used to not want to go to church on Sunday because I want to go party on Saturday night. Now I don't want to party on Saturday night, so I go to church on Sunday. Sunday. It just it just changes. Like it, it, God works in ways that He will change you from the inside out. Things that you don't even think are possible. Like I would never do that. No, like God will change you from the inside out and change the way you think and your perception on things and what your, where your values come from. And it's it's been a blessing, dude. It's been it's been nice to like be able to to not have to take on the burden of life alone because God did it for us. I love man. that. You could tell too, you just seem at more at peace now. I am. You a, seem more is, at peace. There is a lot more. Yeah. yeah. There is peace, man. There's a lot of peace. And that's something I didn't live with. I lived with guilt. I lived with self-hate and beating myself up. And, and that's, that's what the enemy puts in your head over and over again. That's what he wants you to do. Have you ever seen the movie Passion of Christ? Of course. Who hasn't? You know how like... I just watched it recently. Really? I, yeah, I, I didn't ever. It's just, that's a hard movie to watch. You know? Very hard, very graphic. But like the way they portrayed the devil in it was just like, it hit home. Like man, he's just always lurking around, looking for every opportunity to see you trip and see you fall, and he's laughing at you every time you mess up. He's like, I did it again, man. And you know, it's, it's you gotta just like stand up to him, be like, dude, get out, no more. And that's like that was like the biggest thing for me is being able to stand up to that and. You're taking control. Like we are powerful, especially when you have God at your side. Like you don't have to be a victim to that. Nice. So it's it's been it's been cool. And that movie really showed me as like, man, that's how that's how the devil works. Yeah, I you think know? the way they portray that, it was it was more relatable to people, yeah. right? Because you always you always think of the devil only is going to come from hell to get you, but you no, it's a day to day. Yeah. It's every day there. He's in your ear every day. He's trying to get you to do something that you shouldn't to stray away from your path. And you know, we're not perfect. So of course we're going to, we're going to make man. that. But the beautiful thing is that you understand that and you, you counter, you counteract that 
The biggest, all, you know, the biggest thing, you know, we are all sinners, bro, and we're never going to be perfect. And nope. the biggest thing is, is what the devil does is when you sin, he wants you to stay in the sin. He doesn't want you to repent. He doesn't want you to go back to God because he wants to, he wants you to feel guilty about it. He wants you to make you think you think that you can't go back to God. He wants to make you think that God won't take you back. You know, and I've done some things recently that I've had to repent for. I felt terrible about, but it's like, and I distanced myself from God again. But it was like that's what the devil wanted, like. Like, why would I have done that when I could easily just go back and just, like, fix things like that, ask for forgiveness and fix things and then move forward and with strength and not be, right. not feel weighed down by the, weighed down by the guilt, you know? And I went through, like, a, like a four or five days where I was, like, this hard on myself, being, feeling guilty and not repenting. And, you know, finally I was like, you know what? God, like, I, I, I Bible study every morning. I, I go through the Bible app on my cardio and I, I had the scripture I read. And it was, like, it was, like, hit perfectly at that time. It's like... When you sin, like the devil wants you to sit in that sin, but God wants you to repent right away. Just apologize, right? You know, just ask for forgiveness and move on, move forward, and don't do it again. And then it's forgiven, and you don't gotta walk around that weight of that guilt. Dwell on it and have all that stuff. Yeah, just, just like over shoot, I messed up. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna move on. You don't gotta sit there and like I messed up and focus on that, and focus on that, and focus on that, and focus on that, and then just you just seek down, 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 down feel worse and worse about yourself like we don't that's not what god wants for us he don't right. want us to feel bad about that he didn't he knows we're sinners we aren't made perfect you know and as long as we come back to him he wants us to thrive he doesn't want us to live in, in that nice what would you say you'd want to leave this podcast people listening the perception of you now what, what, what would be something you want to tell people if they're listening just watch, to this just watch that's all i want you guys to see is just watch you know, watch what watch changes my life watch how god's works and you know if i'm able to motivate and inspire you guys to you know pursue a relationship with god then go for it because he's a, he's he's a life changer you know it's, it's it's amazing what you can do with god at your side and you know i want to come in here and preach the whole time but it's no know, no honestly, yeah. it's, you know it's been the biggest change in my life and you know being able to physically and emotionally and spiritually feel that you know it's it's it's, it's freeing to be able to come back the second opportunity i have now is because god's given it to me Right. A year ago, I didn't think I was ever going to be anything again. I was. I didn't think I was going to be a bodybuilder. I didn't think I was going to be successful. I didn't think any of this stuff because that's what the enemy wanted. No, I, I mean, this podcast that I have and, and that we started was about this. You being able to share stories that people wouldn't be able to get through social media. I mean, it's hard to, to share that stuff on stories. So for me, I wanted you just to come speak your truth. You know, if, if people feel like you're preaching, then maybe they need to look a little bit deeper if it makes them feel kind of some kind of way, if yeah. they feel triggered, you know, maybe it is something that's inspiring them. But for a lot of people that are listening, this may be what they needed to hear to see your journey. Hey man, if I get, if I even them. get one person to, you know, if I got one person now to read, to hear this podcast and that makes that change in their life, then hey, that's good. Dude, I'm happy about that. That's awesome. So again, thank you so much, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Um, I'm looking forward to your continued success in 2023. You've been nothing but great to myself and everyone you come in contact with. So for me, I appreciate it. Looking bro. Thank forward, you. I'm looking yeah. forward to going to that Olympia. You'll be fine. Win, lo win, lose, yeah. or draw, bro. I mean, you've come a long way, and, and you have a lot to be proud of. So thank you again for being on the podcast, you guys. Until next time, see you guys later. Thanks, guys.